Guys, I'm sorry to say it, but you are budgeting for your tractor all wrong. I'm gonna tell you all those hidden things you're missing out in your budget that you really need to plan for. I know it's easy. You see the shiny green tractor, orange, blue, red, color doesn't matter, but you see that, you're like, oh my goodness, I need to have that. I, I know what you do. You know, you just stare at it, you think, what's that MSRP? What's it gonna cost me, all right? And then you think, all right, I gotta save 20 grand or 10 grand or 50 grand, whatever it might be, that's my goal. We all know that's not the full picture. You know, if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up, leave one right down below. There's also a subscribe button there. If you wanna see more helpful videos like this one, click that subscribe button, you'll get notified of future videos. And also read through that description right down below, underneath the video, all sorts of helpful links down there, a link to my website, Goodworks Tractors, and other places you can get cool tractor attachments, some of them even 5% off with code GWT. Now I don't care if you have a really plain Jane tractor, if you have a super deluxe tractor like this, this is just a starting point. What good can you do with just the tractor itself? You have to have something on the front end, something on the back, something underneath. There's not many jobs you can get done with the tractor itself. You gotta have something connected to it. Attachments. Right here, these are what do the dirty work, what get the job done. Your tractor's gotta use some of these right here in order to tackle your projects, whether it's clearing snow, it could be landscaping, it could be grading out a driveway, putting in food plots, the list goes on. Let's talk about my 4066R tractor, for example. That tractor there, let's just say it's $40,000. You know what, that's a huge chunk of money, but I'm telling you, by the time you get a set of pallet forks, and a grapple, and a snow pusher, and a tiller, and a brush hog, you get the idea. You're looking at thousands of dollars more in attachments to tackle those projects that you have to do. So when you're putzing around on your tractor, I love to do it too, you're thinking of yourself riding along, either tilling your field, maybe grappling a log, maybe even mowing the lawn, but you're doing something with another attachment that's on your tractor. You're not just driving it around from point A to point B. So you got a plan for that kind of thing. It's something that maybe you can add it on later on if you have a certain project that's maybe two years down the road, but most of you guys, when you're buying that tractor up front, you're buying it because you have a specific set of needs that you have to tackle right up front. That's where this sea of attachments comes into play, and that's why I have everything here. If we're talking about hidden costs, let's say you have those attachments, that grapple you wanna run up front, you know what, 90% of tractors, maybe 95% are not gonna have an additional hydraulic function on the tractor in order to operate that grapple. That means you have another hidden cost there to consider outfitting your tractor with the additional hydraulic functions. I'm talking about outlets. When you see quick coupler outlets on the back like this, you may see them up front as well, but if you see an option like that on a tractor, that's how you'll know there's gonna be an additional function there, but most of the time you're not gonna see that. So if you need to add on an additional hydraulic function to your tractor like what you see here, you could easily spend a thousand bucks and in comments of previous videos, some folks have mentioned they spent 1800 bucks, even $2,000 for one additional function. I am going to shamelessly plug the Summit Diverter Kit. This is a company I just started working with not that long ago. They've been around for quite a while, but I really wanted to get a hydraulics partner on board, something that's more of an aftermarket solution that maybe is a little bit more affordable for folks. An option like this is gonna be a DIY solution. So do it yourself. If you got a few hours, you can tackle this. So a Summit Diverter Kit like what you see right here is gonna be somewhere in that $500 range. Pricing could vary a little bit over time. And of course, you can get different options that are gonna change pricing as well. Maybe even the size of your machine. But rest assured, it's gonna end up being a lot less than what you're gonna get at a dealer. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can get 5% off of code GWT at Summit Hydraulics link down below. Storage is one of those really, really miscalculated costs that you're gonna to have to look at and budget for. You know, I have gone through, I can't even tell you how many trailers over the years. I always think I have the right size. I always end up buying another larger trailer. It just happens all the time and I get it. I'm in a little bit of a different scenario because I am delivering tractors to customers' uh, houses all the time, but I do use trailers to handle just my own equipment, going to my hunting lease or other properties if I wanna do uh, work for other customers. And I'll tell you, I run out of space all the time. Even with my latest and greatest trailer here, I've had it for about a year and a half and it is, you know, it's, it's the best one I've had so far by far. It's 33 foot long. You have 28 foot of flat deck and then a, a, a five foot dovetail with those fold ramps there. So it's a lot of space, but you think 33 foot's gonna go a really long way. But if you have a tractor with a brush hog on it, for example, and a front end loader, even a small 1025R is gonna hog up 
almost 20 foot long. So that's not with a tiller or if you want to add on a grapple or anything else you want to bring along with you, especially if you have multiple projects to tackle out at your hunting lease or somewhere else that you want to get done, you just run out of space quickly. And now keep in mind, you don't want to max out the length of your trailer as much as you don't want to max out the weight capacity of your trailer either. So when you see something listed as a 7,000 pound trailer or a 10,000 pound trailer, you still have to deduct that physical weight of the trailer and then that leaves you the balance of that that you can actually, the load you can put on there. So if you have 6,000 pounds worth of tractor and attachments to put on a 7,000 pound trailer, the chances are that's not going to work out very well. You're best off going up to a 10,000 pound trailer which is even more money at that point. Even load securement, you know, if you have a, a bunch of straps or chains just to get your, your load and your attachments tied down securely, you could have an extra couple hundred bucks just wrapped up in that. And so who knows, you know, maybe you don't have to end up buying a trailer. Perhaps you could rent one when you need to or borrow it from a friend, but it is something you wanna keep in mind. A trailer, an investment like this, this was around 13 grand, you know. Some of my smaller pull behind trailers were in the ballpark of two grand to maybe five grand, depending on their configuration, if they were steel or galvanized or aluminum, that kind of thing. But something to keep in mind because it's a big part of a budget that often goes overlooked. And once you have that truck or that trailer, you know what happens then, don't you? Everybody comes out of the woodwork, hey, I heard you had a trailer, you mind if I use it this weekend? <laughs> That's okay though, that's what friends are for. Let's say you have that tractor figured out, you got the attachments you wanna go along with it, then you figure out the trailer you need to haul it all. Well. How much weight is that? Can your current vehicle do that? Because who knows, maybe you have to upsize and get a bigger truck at that point. So it's all tied together. It could be a long-term multi-year planning experience or maybe a luck out and you're one of the few that doesn't actually have to haul their equipment anywhere. Where are you going to keep that machine? I can tell you, storing it outside yeah. uncovered is the last thing you wanna do. That is not one of those things you wanna worry about a few years down the road. You wanna figure that out up front because time has a way of slipping away and the more time you leave your equipment exposed out to the elements, the worse it's gonna be. So what can you do? Well, you got a plan, you know? So figure out how long that tractor is, how wide it is, how tall it is, what attachments are you gonna have along with it? Maybe add some room for margin for future attachments that you're gonna add as well, being able to navigate your space and walk around. You know, this is a thousand square foot unit right here, 50 foot long, 20 foot side to side. It's a thousand square foot of space, but I can tell you I can fill this up with a handful of tractors pretty darn quick along with some attachments as well. But there's ways to do it. You know, other good channels, Tractor Time with Tim has shown racking systems that he's built inside of his storage buildings, whether it's his garage or the new building he has now. But there's ways to kind of condense um, all your attachments into smaller space and really take advantage of it there. It's gonna be a lot better for it if it's stored out of the elements, worth more for you down the road. It's a big amount of money to invest in that attachment or that group of attachments. So make sure you can find a way to keep those undercover. Now I get it, some of you just simply can't do that, but you need the tractor to tackle your projects. They just can't wait. So if you can at least cover them with a tarp or do what we did here. We just did a video on this recently. So you have some of the more maybe delicate areas of your attachments um, that are gonna be left out in the open, but you have them covered and protected for long periods of storage. So we have this Denso tape here that we've wrapped on the cylinder uh, rods that way nothing happens to them because this would be a very expensive repair. You know, the same thing can be said with hoses as well. Sun damage is gonna occur a lot uh, more quickly versus just fading some paint. So keep that kind of thing in mind. If you can put a tarp over it, something to keep it out of the elements, it's gonna be a lot better off for you. So it's one thing to not have enough floor space inside your storage area. However, what if you can't even fit it in because it's too tall? Well, this is proof right here. So all the way up to a four series in the John Deere with a cab that you can fit underneath a nominal eight foot door. So this is technically slightly shorter than eight foot, but you can see it will fit in here. Now the good news is that even an open station four series tractor and anything smaller than that, that has a foldable ROPS, so the ROPS bar will fold down in half, you can actually fit underneath a nominal seven foot high garage door, meaning all your standard homeowner garage doors, if you need to fit it inside there, you'll be able to do so with an open station. Now I do wanna clarify, if we're talking about a cab, whether it's a two, a three, or a four series machine, you're not gonna fit it underneath a standard seven foot high garage garage door, you gotta have an eight foot door. One of the most overlooked, but possibly most important piece of equipment you're gonna need for your tractor, besides the tractor, is gonna be ballast weight. All these suitcase weights and wheel weights that you see here, I harp on it a lot, and I do so because I don't feel like it's 
probably as prevalent and known about as it should be in the tractor world. This is a safety issue that can really result in serious injury or death, but I feel like so many folks are not set up the right way, whether it's liquid ballast in their tires, wheel weights, suitcase weights, a ballast box, most often a combination of a couple of those options there to get proper weight on the backside of your tractor when you're using your front end loader. So whether that's a bucket or pallet forks or a grapple, anything that you have on the front of your tractor and you plan on picking up heavy amounts of weight, when you do so, that means the backside of your tractor is gonna wanna pick up as well. The fulcrum point is gonna be your front axle, so it's almost like a teeter-totter on either side of that. It's your job to make sure the backside of that tractor, right where you're sitting in the operator station, does not come off the ground. If that happens, it's gonna be almost impossible to get it back down without going over. You can get yourself a ballast box like this as well if you don't want to spend as much. I've done a whole video dedicated just to the breakdown on the cost per pound of ballast weight as well. I'd encourage you to check that out because it can feel a little bit, I don't know, like you're <laughs> spinning your wheels or wasting your time because you're spending a lot of money on something you can't really do work with. However, if you view it in a different frame of reference, the fact that you're keeping the rear end of your tractor planted on the ground, you're keeping traction to the ground, you're operating safely, it's gonna allow you to do the work with your front end loader a lot more effectively and efficiently. You even gotta consider things like simple maintenance. You know, whether you're talking about grease, cleaning products, you gotta have your stockpile of, of oils and fluids down here or even filters as well. But you wanna keep that kind of stuff on hand because if you don't have the grease on hand to just tackle it on a regular basis, those bushings that are on your loader or on the three point or on the backhoe or on the mower deck, they can get worn out. That's gonna turn into a lot more costly repair down the road. Always check your air filters on a regular basis. What an easy thing to change out, you know, every 50 or 100 hours if you need to, if you're in a really dirty application. Even just cleaning products like this, you know, spend 50 or 100 bucks, you have it on the shelf and you have it there that you can tackle it a couple times a year, it'll last you for a while. I mean, on second thought, all these costs really are adding up. I wonder how expensive is it just to hire out somebody to tackle your projects for you? I mean, is it really worth all of it? Another shameless plug for this greasing system right here, the Lube Shuttle greasing system. Whoops, there we go again. But what this is, is a advancement in greasing technology, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have the old cartridges that would get crushed. These are almost a crush proof. I'm sure you could do it if you really tried, but uh, they just screw in and screw out. You just push the bottom of the cartridge here to uh, get all the air out of it and prime the system and away you go. But this cover here is just simply a protective cover to go over top of it, but very easy to use. If you've ever had one of those old style uh, greasing systems, you know what I'm talking about. They leak, they are a pain in the butt to prime. It's not that you can't use them, but if you're gonna spend the money on something, get a good product like this, you get 5% off the code GWT, link down below. You know, so that's a lot to think about, a lot to digest, but it's good information to have. That way you can kind of get your ducks in a row on not just the tractor cost, but all those other components that go into it because the overall picture is what you really need to know. Otherwise, you're gonna feel overwhelmed when you first start tractor shopping. I see it all the time. When folks come out here, you know, they see the tractor that they want and then they start to think about all those other costs as they just add up and where they're gonna put it and how they're gonna tow it around and just what attachments they wanna get with it. So it can start to get out of control unless you go into it with a realistic expectation. Now, of course, I'm in the business of selling tractors and attachments. I'd love to earn your business as well. I do ship equipment all over the country, whether it is a tractor or an attachment, or if you wanna to put together a whole package, I'm happy to help you out. If you like what you see here, again, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. If you wanna follow along, hit that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to read through that description right underneath the video. I talked about 5% off. That's where you're gonna find those links down below. And also head on over to goodworkstractors.com where you'll get more information on the tractors and all the attachments that you see here. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.